Hi, my name is Jesse Coleman. I'm Airware's Director of Business Development and Regulatory Affairs. And today I'm here with Alain Seber from César, which is an initiative in Europe to really revolutionize how air traffic management is handled and essentially what the future of air traffic management in Europe will be. So welcome, Alain, and thank you for being Hi, here. Hi, Jesse. Can you tell the audience a little bit more, what is César, how does that fit into the European regulatory landscape, and what does it mean for Europe? So very simply put, César is a European program that is designed to develop over the next couple of years as a future aviation system. We do that by working hand in hand between the policymakers and the industry. We have drones as one of our new big agendas coming up. So uh, that's why I'm here today also to discuss with you. Another interesting kind of corollary I've seen between the US and Europe is for example, in Europe, uh, the regulatory landscape actually allowed the market to grow a lot in the early days because individual countries were passing new regulations that allowed for things like beyond line of sight flying and flying near cities, these types of things. So for example, in France, you know, the regulations have been around since even early 2012. Um, but then you had regulations coming up in France and Germany and Spain and Italy and all these different countries having different regulatory scheme. But then as business expanded across Europe, it became a little more challenging. In the U.S., we have a similar issue now where the federal government is trying to pass regulations, but in the interim, individual states are trying to, to regulate. Can you talk a little bit about that kind of play between, you know, harmonized rules across, say, the entire Eurozone versus kind of reg trying to regulate at a member state level? There is a regulatory framework in Europe that is trying to bring things together. We have the European Commission implementing laws. We have EASA pushing for harmonization, and there are actions ongoing to integrate better the drones topic. With the idea, of course, to provide a framework that takes all of the best practices that we have in Europe and implements them, harmonize it at a European scale. From a CESAR perspective, we are mainly looking at, okay, the system is going to evolve, new technologies are going to be developed. With that, how can the regulatory framework allow a more harmonized implementation of this change. Mm -hmm. So there is a challenge today which is very pressing to put in place a, a harmonized initial regulatory framework, but we are very much more so looking at it from CESAR into how should this further evolve in the future to better diffuse the technology and allow these opportunities that we are identifying to actually unfold and leash uh, in the market. Are there any specific applications or industries that you see being more successful in Europe than anywhere else? Where we see a huge uh, uptake is obviously in the leisure market, imagery and filming. What we are focusing on now is to generate further understanding of what could be the broader applications of the use of drones for society. So we look at the agriculture sector, we look at the energy sector, we look at the public safety and security sectors, and beyond that, at future deliveries of parcels, impacts on the future mobility mm -hmm. of European citizens. So we take a very strategic perspective. What would the world look like tomorrow and what do we need to do to enable this to happen? Having in mind always that we want to build a safe system mm -hmm. and a smarter system than today. So the topics of digitalization, higher levels of automation, new information services, new interactions between stakeholders in the systems are central. So we see the drones as a vehicle for change, uh, also for us in aviation air traffic management. And as the chief economist at Cesar, I mean, it's obviously pretty, pretty impactful to see kind of the specific value and economic value you can see it bring to not just countries, but companies and those types of things. As far as financial drivers, I mean, are you guys seeing that evolve as you continue on with your work and what the financial implications will be? What we see is that Europe needs to work better together with the rest of the world to develop the technologies of tomorrow. We see a lot of willingness from a number of actors to actually invest in the topic. Mm -hmm. In particular, in the private sector, we see amazing startups, new players also entering the scene. Uh, we welcome that. But for us at this stage, it's a lot also about 
really articulating a clear story about what value to society all of this will bring because we are a policy-driven program. So whenever we say that we need to make the right choices about the technology of tomorrow, we have to articulate it from a societal benefit perspective. So right now, this is where our attention is in really understanding that we see a lot of appetite from across the field. The landscape is uh, developing rapidly, but we need to make sense of that from a societal perspective. Well, thank you, Alon, very much for being here. Thank you, Jesse.